Hi there and welcome back. For those of you who are joining first time, my name is Hasik Thanki. I am the founder of presentation series called Intro to Individual Life Underwriting. Today we are going to talk about residual underwriting. For those of you who have attended my first introductory session or the overview of life underwriting, you may recall that I have stated on any life app, we can break it down into three components. One component is financial underwriting. One component is medical underwriting. And last but not least, I call one component as a residual underwriting. And by that, I mean that anything that we need to know, we need to look into that really matters other than financial, other than medical, is called residual underwriting. So, there is a laundry list of things because anything and everything other than financial and medical can be considered residual underwriting and we have to be time bound and we cannot just go on and on and on. So I'll share a few highlights of what you are typically going to encounter more frequently in your daily routine. So with that being said, let me share a few examples. For example, as you review the life app, you look at all the details, financials, medicals, likewise you will see a question that refers to foreign travel. So have you had or do you plan in last one year, two year or in next one or two year? And there are some state specifics, uh, rules and regulations, be aware of it, especially in addition to that, also follow your company specifics. But take a pause and see what is the purpose of this uh, and why am I addressing this. It poses a risk if the proper insured has a tendency to go out to any countries all over the world, then there could be a crime statistics out there, um, there could be a lack of uh, medical facilities available, God forbid in the case of emergency, uh, how is the political stability in that particular country, what is the basic in infrastructure setup, uh, medical, tra medical transportation, you name it. So all those things matters because if a foreigner goes to a country as a visitor so in this instance it would be a foreign travel that matters because let's say he ends up god forbid having a stroke or a heart attack wherever country he may go are they equipped to take the critical medical facilities needs that may be necessary the basic infrastructure or the er urgent care. Are we having issues in that particular country? That boils down to extra mortality. So industry-wide companies, they try to break it down based on those aspects like A, B, C, D. Relatively speaking, A would be like a preferred uh, B, C like a standard. Then it comes to how many weeks of stay in that particular country, how frequently, what was the plan, what, uh, what, will, what was the history, what will be the plan, those are the things that we need to look into to coordinate and follow your company specifics. It may mean from preferred to standard or from a standard to uh, flat extra depending upon your company specifics. And as we go down from A, B, C, D, D generally would mean risk not acceptable. There could be some categories where they call individual considerations. So beware of what are the rules, what are the company specifics, what your company wants you to follow. 
Make sense? So that's what we call one of the aspects of residual underwriting. Foreign travel, it's not financial. Foreign travel is not medical. Likewise, you may confront a situation where a foreign resident is interested in buying coverage from your company. So obviously the question is that if he is a foreign resident, why is he interested in buying from your company? Maybe he frequently stays here because of his business, because of his job. So, and again, for to underwrite the foreign residents, there is a laundry list of requirements that majority of the companies out in the industry would want you to follow. So be aware of those rules and regulations and, and requirements. It may mean, for example, that hey we will not provide coverage to you unless and until you are looking for a permanent coverage or you have to have a minimum face amount of say 500k or we will need complete convincing comprehensive in english medical records of last five years because it is difficult to arrange for the blood, urine, pyramid that you would normally do and arrange if they are not living here and they are on a time crunch so it is difficult to follow plus lots of paperwork or rules regulations to follow and the company's stand is this that we don't want to go through the process of detailed underwriting to underwrite foreign residents if at the end of the cycle they are not going to re retain with us and that's why the need for permanent coverage and all many times they are just looking for a term coverage and they don't want to even stay longer so persistency ratios those are the issues that companies do look into and not to mention about while underwriting the foreign residents getting those uh, records in english from different countries all over the world God forbid there is any death claim, investigations, all those things from submission to commission and from commission and beyond takes time, it's expensive. So industry-wide, every company, they follow their own statistics, their own guidelines. But foreign residents, that is a category that you may want to make a note of. And again, that is another example of residual underwriting. Likewise, think about occupation as you review the life app. Remember in the past I addressed that the, we will discuss this later. So look at the occupation. Maybe the insured is a bartender or a firefighter or does underground mining work or who knows. We all like watching movies, action movies. So who knows, he is a stuntman in movies. So what extra modality it means to our company? That's what you need to look at. And what happens, every company, they have their own rules and regulations. So just be aware of that. Likewise, as you review the life app, look for the habits and hobbies. So you may have someone with a mountain climbing, scuba diving, Someone may be having adverse driving history, driving record. So, careless driving plus alcohol issues. I see in my backyard, hand gliding and parachuting and you name it. So, I always wonder that uh, how would we price them? What is the extra mortality uh, we are dealing with? You can have, I can go on and on and on, but I just jot down a couple of points here to make uh, uh, a note of what we call residual underwriting. Say you can have student pilot or a commercial pilot. Uh, you may have a motor sports and the list goes on and on and on. So the take home message is be aware of your company specifics as it relates to residual underwriting. Number one. Number two depending upon the situation there may be state 
specifics rules and regulations you need to respect that so that would obviously be synchronized with your company specifics but something that you need to ask yourself as you underwrite and as you review the life app and many times you will see that preferred by one company may be standard by the other company because agents or brokers may argue with you that hey he is getting preferred how come you are offering standard or hey uh, we tried here and they are offering standard how come you are uh, charging flat extra well it boils down to low of large number dealing with statistics and probabilities because every company they keep on doing their um, research so what their actuaries are telling to them plus supported by their own claims their own experience that determines the pricing structure so that is something that you may want to make a note of it and again as we know that there is an element of art and science life underwriting that we discussed before so there, there are individual considerations there is an element of judgment that you want to exercise wisely prudently so with that we will stop here and what i'm thinking is that because financial medical and residual these are the three essential components we started with the basics of life underwriting we did try to scratch the surface of financial underwriting and likewise this was a brief overview or a trailer of a movie about residual underwriting now we will get into the real fun and you know what i am talking about we will start when we meet again with medical underwriting so with that bye now take care